The Supreme Court went into recess for the summer after making a major ruling involving employee health insurance and birth control. The high court ruled that some for-profit companies are not required to provide contraception coverage to employees. The, deci the decision came in a case brought by David and Barbara Green, the owners of the Oklahoma City-based arts and crafts store Hobby Lobby. The evangelical Christian couple argued the Affordable Care Act requirement that their company provide birth control coverage violated their religious beliefs. Supreme Court decided that Americans don't give up their religious freedom just because they open a family business. What we saw today was five male justices rule that discrimination specifically against women is not discrimination in their book. While the Obama administration argued that birth control is essential to women's health, the majority of justices suggested that the government could pay for the coverage itself. The court's 5-4 to four ruling was narrow and qualified. The contraception exemption only applies to so-called closely held corporations that are under the control of a few people. Alta Charo from the University of Wisconsin Law School is here. Thanks for braving the weather and coming out today. <laughs> Pleased to do so. This is a narrow decision by the Supreme Court. What does that tell you? Well, the majority says it was a narrow decision, but there's even some disagreement on the court about that. Uh, the majority opinion says that it only applies to a particular kind of corporation, which is owned by just a few people, and that it only applies by the terms of the decision to issues around contraception. However, the reasoning that they used uh, is reasoning that could apply to other topics. And indeed, the, dissenting, the main dissenting opinion by Justice Ginsburg makes the point that the same theory could hold for objecting to coverage for certain kinds of vaccines, for embryonic stem cell uh, therapy, or even for any kind of service that involves recognizing the marriage of two people of the same sex. So we don't really know where this will go. Well, this is the first time the Supreme Court has ever ruled that a corporation has religious rights, essentially. What, what was your reaction to their decision? Uh, I wasn't surprised, but I was rather dismayed. Uh, I think this is consistent with a line of decisions now we're seeing where the court is recognizing corporations as having the kinds of rights we've always associated with natural, biological persons. Uh, you remember the controversial Citizens United decision, giving corporations the right to spend only, almost unlimited amounts of money mm -hmm. in campaigns under a free speech analysis. Uh, it's a very aggressive interpretation of the First Amendment, which covers both freedom of religion and speech. Uh, critics have called it weaponizing the First Amendment because of the way it's being used to kind of trample upon the interests of those who are the victims of the speech or the victims of these actions. So I guess time will tell how these women are going to get their birth control pills. Well, fortunately, a lot of women will continue to be able to get not only pills, but the even more expensive and more effective IUDs through either their existing insurance that will continue to be offered by some or all, most of these closely held corporations. The opinion does not cover publicly traded corporations, so those women will still be able to take advantage of the law. And of course, fortunately, a number of women can actually afford this. But unhappily, about half of the co of corporations in America are of this type of closely held corporation. Some of them very large, like Mars and Cargill. Even Hobby Lobby has 570 stores and thousands of employees. And for those, we just have to see how many of those are going to now claim some kind of exemption from giving their employees the general coverage and general protection of the law. Well, that's interesting because I thought the closely held corporation meant that it was a small family owned. Oh, no, this is but Cargill it's and Mars. Um, and Koch Brothers. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. It, okay. it, it absolutely is one of the most common ways in which the story has been presented. It sounded like it was mom and pop businesses. They were never subject to this requirement ever. The law does not cover businesses with fewer than 50 employees. So the classic mom and pop, and I can't do that because it's really mine, that's not what this is about. This is about big companies that happen to be family owned. Does this open the door for possible more litigation against the Affordable Care Act? Well, there's certainly lots of room for it, yes. Um, but. Uh, we tend to see almost all of the challenges come focused on issues around women's reproductive rights. We don't see it, for example, on uh, incorporating coverage, let's say, for preventive care for men that enhances their sexual capacities, even if they're not married, although that would also be sinful under many religious interpretations. So we really have to watch for things that have any connection either to uh, embryos and abortion or to women's sexuality or to same-sex marriage. That's fascinating. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all our time for it. Alder, thanks for coming out Thank today. you for braving the weather to come out today. We really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, you always. want to the show, I'll walk you out in an umbrella. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for Thank coming you. out. Good to see you. We'll be right back.